Today, we're going to discuss a case of a pediatric patient with sarcoma. We will consider testing strategies for intrac fusions in sarcoma and think about suitable first-line treatment options. And when a treatment break happens, we'll discuss what treatment options can be considered when there is disease progression. This patient is a 14-year-old, otherwise healthy boy who presents with two to three weeks of gradually increasing shortness of breath with activity and stridor. On initial imaging, he is found to have a large neck mass in the region of the thyroid. A CT of his neck demonstrated an approximately six centimeter tumor appearing to arise just behind the right lobe of the thyroid and causing significant leftward tracheal deviation and tracheal compression. The patient is therefore admitted to the ICU due to concerns of impending respiratory failure from tracheal compression. A CT chest and a PET CT demonstrated the primary mass was hypermetabolic and there was no metastatic disease. He then underwent a core needle biopsy that shows a low-grade spindle cell sarcoma. In order to decide the best treatment for this patient, we would like to test for an intrac fusion. What testing method would you use? Would you use NGS or FISH? Next generation sequencing would be the guideline recommended testing option for this case, followed by consideration of immunohistochemistry or IHC to confirm protein expression of the detected intrac fusion. However, given the clinical urgency, FISH is a reasonable answer as the turnaround time is typically shorter than NGS and it can be more cost effective. In general, NGS is clearly recommended for tumors that have low frequencies of intrac gene fusions while FISH is clearly recommended for tumors with very high prevalence of intrac gene fusions, such as infantile fibrosarcoma. Spindle cell sarcoma has an intermediate frequency of intrac gene fusions, and so either testing option can be considered. If FISH were pursued and an intrac fusion was not identified, RNA-based NGS should be considered to identify both intrac fusions as well as other kinase-activating alterations that can occur in tumors with similar histology. In this case, we did all three, immunohistochemistry, FISH, and next-generation sequencing simultaneously because the patient was at risk for respiratory failure, and we wanted to evaluate for both intrac fusions as well as other targetable kinase-activating alterations simultaneously. Fluorescent in-situ hybridization, or FISH, for intrac 1, 2, and 3 was performed for this patient, and the results were positive for an intrac 1 gene rearrangement, supporting the diagnosis of an intrac rearranged spindle cell sarcoma. Knowing this, what would you consider as the first-line option for this patient? Would you choose chemotherapy or an intrac inhibitor? Based on current treatment guidelines, this is the most suitable choice for this patient and the one I opted for. Current guidelines recommend treatment with TREC inhibitors as the standard of care for patients with intrac fusion-positive sarcomas. Studies like SCOUT and NAVIGATE have shown a high objective response rate and durable responses in intrac rearranged spindle cell tumors to TREC inhibitors like larotrectinib and intrectinib, and even better response in pediatric populations compared to adults with similar intrac fusion positive tumors. While there is limited data on chemotherapy for low grade tumors like this, a study by Orbach et al. compared TREC inhibitors to chemotherapy in patients with infantile fibrosarcoma and showed a better response rate in the TREC inhibitor group. The patient experienced tumor shrinkage on treatment with a first-generation TREC inhibitor and had a long-term response for two years on therapy. The tumor remained in close proximity to the esophagus and trachea, and the patient had a rapid, near-complete response within six months, so we didn't think surgery was a good option. Given the potential life expectancy of pediatric patients and the unknown long-term effects of TREC inhibition, Recent studies like SCOUT and the ADVL1823 study have explored the outcomes of discontinuing TREC inhibitors in pediatric patients with intrac fusion positive sarcomas who have achieved favorable responses. Given that 40 to 60% of patients may be able to achieve a durable treatment-free remission even in the absence of surgery, a trial of treatment discontinuation was attempted after two years of therapy. After six months on treatment break, the patient unfortunately had disease progression. We then attempted surgical resection, but only an R2 resection was achieved given proximity to the airway and esophagus. Which treatment would you consider as a next-line option? Would you retreat with a first-line TREC inhibitor, or would you consider changing to a second-line TREC inhibitor? Based on current treatment studies from Mascarenas and Leitch et al., 
This is a suitable choice for this patient and the one I opted for. The patient had a very rapid and good response to a first-line TRAC inhibitor that was sustained for years. In early data, patients retreated with TREC inhibitors after progression during a treatment holiday had a high response rate to retreatment. Thus, this is the option we decided to go for. This patient commenced retreatment with a first-generation TREC inhibitor and achieved a partial response within six weeks. In conclusion, testing for intrac fusions and other kinase-activating alterations is critical to provide treatment options. Testing strategies can be tailored to the individual patient and tumor type based on the pretest probability and the urgency of testing. TREC inhibitors are highly active in children with intrac fusion positive tumors, including those who are newly diagnosed. Local control remains important. However, a subset of patients can maintain a durable remission when therapy is withdrawn, even in the absence of local control. Retreatment with TREC inhibitors can be effective when there's progression off therapy, but questions remain about the long-term management of these patients. Thank you for your attention.